Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and welcome to my channel Sandy's Happy Plants. If you are already subscribed, welcome back and if you haven't been here before, welcome for the first time. And I'm really excited, you know why? Because it's spring, yay, finally, and soon to be summer. And uh, which brings me to what I want to talk about today is uh, moving your plants outside for the summer. Should you do it? Why should you do it? And what are some of the uh, challenges and which plants do the best outside? So let's talk about that. So let's get right into it and talk about uh, why putting plants outside in the summer is a good idea and why you should put your plants outside for the summer. Um, if you have a little outdoor spot, a nice little Shangri-La outside, um, it's just nice to put your plants out as well. And also, you know, your plants really do enjoy being outside in the summer. You know, they've been stuck in the house all winter where it's cold and, and dark and... <laughs> try i'm making it sound so bad but no uh you know but they do enjoy getting outside because let's face it even the brightest spot in your house is still going to be darker than the shadiest spot outside so all the sun they're going to get outside all the moisture all the warmth uh you know the 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 temperature is going to be closer to uh, what the temperature is like in their natural habitat. So they're just going to thank you for it and they, they'll just love it. Granted, there are some plants that do very well inside the house and uh, some plants actually like to be in the house more than they like to be outside. But uh, there are a lot of plants, a lot of tropicals, a lot of tropical house plants that love to be outside and actually really thrive and flourish outside. I put a bunch of my house plants out every summer and I'll see if I can find some pictures uh, and I'll show you what my little backyard oasis looks like in the summer but uh, I know it can be kind of scary if you've never done it before it can be quite scary um, putting your house plants outside in the summer because uh, you might think oh I don't want to kill them I don't want something to go wrong or pests or whatever so uh, but trust me they will love it they will thank you for it uh, but there are definitely some things to consider and um, the first thing to consider is the Sun <laughs> Definitely. So you don't want to just uh, throw your plants right into the blazing hot sun right off the get-go because um, that's not a good idea. <laughs> so for most tropical plants, um, dappled sun is uh, the ideal kind of light. Um, that's the kind of light that they grow in in their natural habitat. So most tropical plants are what's called under canopy plants. So they grow underneath of bigger trees in the rainforest. So they don't get the burning bright hot sun, they just get dappled sun or shade. And so uh, a place like a shaded patio or under a big tree or under an umbrella or if you just have like, um, like, a, like a shady spot in your yard is ideal for most tropical plants. So they don't get the, the bright blazing hot sun on their leaves. Because house plants, you know, aren't used to have um, they're not used to having the sun on their leaves. They're really sensitive to that. So if you put them in direct sun, they will burn and they'll get sunburn. And um, I'll show you some pictures of the, what it looks like. But sunburn on plants can look like uh, pale spots, um, scorched, uh, discolored spots on the leaves, um, scorched looking dry, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't want to put them in, in a direct bright sun. Um, and having said that, there are some houseplants that love going into um, bright direct sun, but you do have to acclimatize them to it. You don't want to just throw them right into the sun. Uh, morning sun or eastern sun is okay. So if you have a spot in your yard or your uh, balcony or your patio that gets the morning sun, uh, that's actually uh, when the sun is not that hot yet. So a lot of tropicals can handle that sun because it just doesn't have that burning force yet uh, like the midday sun does. So morning sun in most cases is also fine. But uh, the best spot is like a, a dappled sun situation. And um, the shadiest spot in your yard is still going to be way brighter than the brightest spot in your house. Unless you have like a, a big south facing window that gets like bright, bright, bright sun. But uh, even in like very well lit um, bright light situation in your house, it's still going to be darker than the shadiest spot in your yard. So the next challenge I want to talk about when moving your plants outside for the summer is watering. And uh, will your watering schedule change outside? And the answer is yes. The short answer is yes. 
in most cases you'll have to water them more outside and obviously that depends where you live if you live in a in a dry climate or in a moist climate right so if you live in a more arid um, dry climate then you'll definitely have to water them a lot more um, because you know it the first of all the sun uh, is going to dry out the the soil way faster um, it's also more ventilated also the warmer temperatures and the more light the plants are getting um, the more energy the plants are using and thus the more water they're using so uh, you'll definitely have to water them more often um, if you live in a in a more moist climate where it gets lots of rain uh, you might not have to water them at all you might just be able to put them in the rain and that's fine so you really have to just keep an eye on it. It's not uh, like in your house where you have a controlled environment and you water them once a week per se. Um, you do have to keep an eye on it. Just uh, use your finger, make sure they're not too dry or not too wet. In some cases, if you get a lot of rain, uh, you might have to kind of put them um, under some a roof or something so they don't get as much rain. Like with your succulents, succulents for instance, like cacti, aloe and other succulents, um, you have to make sure that they're in well draining soil outside so that they don't get waterlogged if you have a lot of rain in your, in your area. Uh, and so just make sure that uh, they're in the kind of soil that drains fast. Uh, so like cactus soil, you can buy it. I'll link it in the description uh, to some cactus soil if you want to buy some. Um, you can also make your own mix of cactus soil. Uh, you use perlite with sand and some um, houseplant soil. Uh, you mix it all together. Uh, there's lots of recipes on cactus soil, uh, how to make cactus soil on the internet. Uh, I don't keep that many cacti anymore because I just don't have the room in my house for them. I only have two small, smaller south-facing windows. So uh, I don't keep that many cacti, but you can find a recipe for that um, online. But yes, so watering definitely will be affected. So just keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind uh, when moving your house plants outside for the summer is that they will be exposed to more pests outside. So um, mainly aphids, white flies, uh, so certain beetles uh, and snails and squirrels <laughs> sometimes, depending where you live. But uh, yeah, so if you do notice some pests on your plants outside in the summer, uh, there are some sprays you can purchase and you can spray the plant with them and usually it kills them. Just make sure um, that you're not using something too toxic. Keep in, keep that in mind. Keep the toxicity of the product in mind. I like to use things that are a little bit more um, natural, like an insecticidal soap. It's usually just like a soap-based formula, so it's not that toxic. And uh, because you don't want to kill the pollinators, there's lots of bees and other, other insects that pollinate plants, so you don't uh, want them to be exposed um, to to any toxic stuff that will kill them. So what I usually do in the summer, if I see something like a snail, I'll just pick them off and throw them far away. <laughs> Same with lily beetles. Uh, they can be quite a pest, those little lily beetles. They're like, uh, they're red and kind of oblong shaped and they have these antennas. And <laughs> what I do is I just pick them off and throw them far away. <laughs> they keep coming back, but I just throw them away. Um, it's not that effective, I guess. but. You can collect them all, put them in a bucket and drive them out somewhere to a park, I guess. Um, but uh, so uh, you can also just uh, use your garden hose to spray off pests or or like I said, you can use a more natural product like like dish soap or something like that. And uh, and once uh, you notice that the, that the pest is gone, just um, rinse it off or let the rain rinse it off. And that way other insects don't die from that stuff. So but that is definitely another thing to consider with your house plants um, outside and you want to give them a good look over before bringing them back inside for the winter so that you don't bring anything inside. Like I said, outside there are certain insects that, um, that eat other insects. So I find that in the summer, usually it's not a problem when they're outside, when my plants are outside, they usually don't get affected by the pests if they have something on it because other insects will eat them and it just kind of balances out. And um, so it's not usually a problem, but you don't want to bring them inside your house in the winter and introduce them to all your other plants because inside your house, it will become a problem right quick. Where I live, there are a lot of squirrels 
and uh, <laughs> they're really cute. I love them. We actually feed them. Uh, we feed them peanuts, so it's it's actually kind of my old fault that they um dig in my plants, but they do tend to dig in my plants and they tend to dig in some plants more than others and I don't really know why they prefer certain plants, but it's, it's, it is quite annoying uh, to come outside in the morning and most of the soil is dug out of your plant um, and yeah, so they, they like to hide the peanuts in the plants and uh, sometimes they like to eat the roots, which is, that that is bad, bad squirrel. <laughs> Anyways, so what uh, I do uh, to deter the squirrels from digging in my plants is um, I kind of put uh, rocks uh, in the base of the pot or like, you know, on top of the soil so that they can't dig. Um, there are some things you can get, like there's like a mesh, uh, kind of like a wire mesh you can lay across the soil as well so that they can't dig. Um, sometimes some of them I'll put, like I'll hang somewhere. Uh, so that the squirrels can't get to them. But like I said, they like to dig in certain plants and not in others, which I don't know why. But um, yeah, so that's another thing to consider, <laughs> squirrels. Okay, let's talk about which plants do well outside. So the ones I put outside in the summer are um, all pretty much common house plants, and all of these plants do really good outside. Um, the first one I want to talk about is aloe, so aloe vera, and that's a plant that actually does awesome outside, and uh, that's a plant that can actually go into straight full sun, um, but not right away. You do have to acclimatize it. So in order to do that, um, what I do is I put it into, um, into the shade first, and then I keep it in the shade for about a week. And then I will put it into dappled sun, so under a tree or under uh, an umbrella or a shade of some sort where it gets a little dappled light, like dappled sun, and I'll leave it there for about a week. Then I will put it into straight morning sun where it gets full morning sun for about a week. And then what I'll do is I will put it, like leave it in the morning sun in the morning and then move it into the afternoon sun for about an hour and then take it and put it back in the shade for the rest of the time, like for the rest of the day. And so then every day I'll do that a little bit more. So um, I'll put it in the morning sun in the morning and then in the evening sun for a couple hours and then three hours and then four hours and then so until it's uh, in straight full sun all the time. And uh, while you're doing that, you wanna rotate the plant so it doesn't get um, used to the sun only on one side. Um, so you know, because then it might burn on the other side. So just keep rotating the plant um, and keep acclimatizing it little by little to the to the sun. And um, but other than that, yes, aloe does very well outside. And a really cool thing about aloe outside is that they will most most of the time they actually will bloom. And it's so beautiful. They get this big long flower spike, and and it's it's just awesome. This it's so much fun to watch and um, and usually they don't they don't bloom inside because they just don't have enough light inside right um, unless you have like a big south facing window and they get lots and lots and lots of sun but um, usually they don't bloom outside uh, inside I mean and uh, and cacti and succulents is the same as aloe so um, same same requirements full sun but acclimatize them slowly and uh, fun fact about cacti and lots of succulents they also bloom and they create in most cases the same kind of blooms um, big long flower spikes and that's really cool to watch so yeah cacti aloe succulents all do amazingly outside and uh, ficus or rubber tree also does very well outside and they will actually grow really big. They'll grow these big, big leaves outside and they put out a lot of growth in one summer. So it's really fun to watch. And they are also a plant that can go into direct sun, but just like with uh, the aloe and uh, cacti and succulents, you want to acclimatize them. And um, they are actually a little bit more prone to sunburn, like the aloes and stuff are a little bit hardier. Um, the ficus, the rubber tree, uh, you wanna you wanna kind of um, acclimatize them very slowly, and if you don't want a chance, to, just don't do it. Just put them or just put them in the shade. Uh, don't put them in the sun. Just put them in the shade if you want to put it outside. In the shade, they'll do fine. Uh, they'll still grow really big leaves and everything, um, but but they can go in straight sun as well and do very well. 
Another plant that does very well outside is the Monstera, which everybody loves. And that's actually a really hardy plant. And you can put that in any kind of light. Dappled sun, shade uh, is best. And um, I find outside that they, uh, they get uh, way bigger leaves and there's way more fenestration outside because um, they just get so much more light and uh, they'll just love you for it. So all plants in the Tradescantia family are perfect for putting outside in the summer. So that's a uh, purple heart, uh, spider wart, Moses in the cradle, wandering dude, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, they're so hardy. I put them outside every summer. I actually don't um, keep them in the winter in the house. Well, I do, but what I do is I actually chop them all up at the end of the summer and I put them in water. I put all the cuttings in water and give a bunch away. And then I keep some of them on a grow shelf all winter in the water and let them water root. And then as soon as the summer comes, I put them all back outside in planters and uh, let them take over and they just go they get they go crazy they get huge outside and you can stick them right into direct sun right away they won't burn i mean maybe a little bit of them will burn but they spring back like crazy um they're so they're such a hardy plant um especially the the um Chattiscantia, um zebrina zebrina is so hardy um i put it straight into um my garden beds as well as ground cover in between other plants and it just takes over so warning if you live in a climate that does not get cold winters so um, if you live in a climate where plants don't die off in the winter do not plant this <laughs> in your garden bed unless you want it to take over everywhere um, because it is actually very very aggressive and it will it will grow like crazy in one summer it'll just take over your whole garden bed so if you live in a colder climate where you want that to happen then great go ahead put it outside <laughs> it's it's a great plant for outside also for hanging baskets or or planters yeah any any plant in the, in the Tradescantia family will do awesome outside and another plant that I put outside every summer is my spider plant. And I know I told you guys before in my other videos that um, I just can't keep spider plants alive in my house. I really can't. And uh, <laughs> I'll show you a picture of what my spider plant looks like right now after being inside for a whole winter. It looks so sad. It's so sad. It's barely hanging on, like it's almost dead. <laughs> but I put it outside every summer and it just gets beautiful 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 it looks like a beautiful big luscious plant it's so happy outside and i'll show you guys a picture of that as well and uh yeah so i put that outside every summer and it just loves it loves it loves it so um and i put it under a tree so it gets dappled light and uh yeah it's just it's just a happy camper there and plants like birds of paradise or banana leaf plants, those are really good outside as well. Um, one thing to consider with those is that they have these really uh, large, uh, broad leaves and the wind tends to pick them up and throw them around. So um, what tends to happen is they get a little bit tattered looking outside. Uh, I personally don't mind that look because I think it just looks more natural and I, I kind of enjoy that look. But if you're not into that look, maybe put them in a, in a spot where it's a little bit more sheltered from, from the wind so that the leaves don't get so tattered looking. But yes, uh, Bird of Paradise do awesome outside as well. Um, yeah, very hardy. Other plants I put outside every summer is my hibiscus and my crotons. So my hibiscus is also kind of barely hanging on now. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's getting there. It's getting there. It's getting a little bit sad looking. But um, as soon as I put it back outside, it will bounce back and it will put out flowers, and it's just beautiful. Um, and the crotons, um, they, they're awesome. They can go straight into into bright sun. Uh, with the crotons and the hibiscus, I usually don't acclimatize it all that much. Um, I might put it into the morning sun for a week, and then then in. I'll move it into the into the bright sun and uh, they seem to be doing they seem to do okay like that so yeah crotons hibiscus um, I find with uh, crotons especially they do pick up quite a few pests in the summer uh, they are prone to spider mites so keep an eye on that uh, before bringing them back in uh, for the winter so those are just a, a few plants that I bring outside every summer and uh, there's many many more that are safe to bring outside and uh, all of a sudden there's a big cloud coming in here. I'm sitting right at my uh, nice south facing window here and there's a big cloud coming in now which I don't like <laughs> but it brings me to the next point.
when to bring your plants outside when is it safe if you live in a colder climate when is it safe to bring your plants outside so that there's no more chance of freezing and all of that um so I go by the rule of waiting until the nighttime temperatures no longer drop below 13 to 15 degrees Celsius or 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So wait until then. Uh, that should be safe for most tropical plants. Um, some cacti and aloe and um, succulents are hardier, so you can put those outside uh, earlier. Uh, they're usually fine with like 5 degrees Celsius. I think that's like 40 Fahrenheit yeah 40 Fahrenheit um, yeah and they're hardier they can go outside earlier um, but yeah just wait until there's no more chance of frost outside obviously uh, 13 to 15 degrees Celsius or that's uh, 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit yes oh look the Sun is back yay <laughs> um, anyways the same goes for when to bring them back in for the winter so just uh, make sure it doesn't get too cold uh, same temperature range uh, 13 to 15 degrees uh, bring them in when it gets below that so I hope this helps with your questions about bringing your houseplants outside for the summer and like always if you have any comments or more questions you can leave it in the comment section and if you haven't subscribed to my channel already make sure you hit subscribe so that you never miss an episode and you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and sometimes TikTok <laughs> but most importantly enjoy the spring hopefully it'll be summer soon yay <laughs> and enjoy your plants and I'll see you next time Bye.